There are a lot of weapons that share the same weapon class in Elden Ring. This includes Colossal Sword, which brings with it 11 incredibly large and honestly similar coarse lumps of iron. Unless one of these is for a specific build, such as a magic build or a faith build, it would be difficult to find reasons to pick one over another if one of the options does considerably more damage than the previous. An experienced Souls player might already understand where I'm going with this, but I believe the standout characteristic of a weapon is not the damage, but the moveset. Colossal Swords mostly use crouch pokes to stay viable in PvP, which is a fast way to get to the rolling attack. And most Colossal Sword users won't actually venture beyond using that single move, viewing every other option on the weapon as a downgrade. Why do an R2 that's not going to land when I can just do a crouch poke? Why do an R1 that's easily avoided when I can just do a crouch poke? Why try and roll catch with this difficult move when I could just do a crouch poke? Why use a running attack when I can just do a crouch poke? The reason I think this is the case is not because Colossal Swords are all too slow, but because most of the movesets for the Colossal Swords are very similar to each other. In fact, for 8 of the Colossal Swords out of those previous 11, the R2 is this really awful, slow, awkward overhead slam that follows up with another uppercut overhead reverse slam. This attack is very easily avoidable and offers basically no forward momentum at all, giving it little roll catch or punish ability. With eight of the Colossal Swords removed from this topic, that leaves only three other Colossal Swords to be used with a unique R2. The three that remain are the Great Sword, or the Guts Great Sword, as you'll pretty much everybody will call it, the Troll Knight Sword, which is a, a short magic Colossal Sword, and the Zweihander. The Guts Great Sword has a unique horizontal slash R2 that's pretty decent for roll catching. It works if people roll in. You'll often miss people who are rolling away, unfortunately. Not that you can't use it to catch somebody rolling away, it's just not very likely. The Troll Knight Sword gets a lot less use because of the range that I mentioned before. It's not very long, and even though it has a really nice stab R2, you won't get much use out of it just because of the length. And that leaves the Zweihander, which actually shares the same R2 as the Troll Knight Sword, except the Zweihander is just as long as the Guts Great Sword. The Zweihander, unfortunately, gets passed up a lot, probably because it has the lowest attack rating of any Colossal Sword, and it's not close. Pretty much every Colossal Sword in the game will outdamage the Zweihander on any build. Many people probably picked up the Zweihander on the first playthrough and discarded it the moment they found something better. However, I believe that the Zweihander R2 can often make up for any of the weapon's shortcomings in the damage department, even for hitting for damage. To understand why, we need to touch up really quickly on motion values. I'm not an expert in motion values, but I know enough to explain it in a way that's understandable. Motion values are the modifier assigned to an attack to determine the damage of the attack. It's why an R1 and an R2 don't do the same damage despite the attack rating of the weapon being the same. Motion values act as a modifier. And the basic way to look at it is higher motion value equals higher multiplier. I bring this up because of the crouch poke point I made earlier, where most people are not even using any of the other moves on a Colossal Sword and only using the crouch poke. The rolling attack motion values are significantly lower than any of the other attacks that the weapon has. Being able to consistently and reliably land an R2 with its significantly higher motion value is going to make up for any damage difference that the weapon probably has. On top of this, most people won't expect somebody to do an R2 with a Colossal Sword. Most people are used to the waves of people only doing crouch pokes, giving you a significant advantage at landing that specific move. That's not all. After landing a crouch poke, you can actually reliably follow up with an R2 for a roll catch. If instead of a roll catch, they decide to swing instead, the R2 also provides very fast-acting hyper armor. This hyper armor will give you the ability to trade instead of getting hit and being flinched out of your R2 windup. People do this because if you were to try and do two crouch pokes in a row and they swung at you, they might be able to interrupt you between your hyper armor. This R2 hyper armor protects you from that attack as well as gives you the opportunity to land a thrust counter hit, which is one of my favorite mechanics in the whole game. When you do an attack of any kind, your thrust defense goes down for a couple moments. Landing a thrust on somebody in this period will give you significantly better damage. Wearing the Spear Talisman will also further increase this damage to a very scary degree. And all of what I just said is only to add on top of the other advantages the Zweihander brings, including the low stat requirements, the lowest weight of all Colossal Swords, and best of all, Fashion. 
It's all of these things that has made this Y-Hander one of my favorite weapons in the whole game and made it a permanent member of my arsenal and why I will try to fit this weapon onto basically any build I make. If you're looking for an Ash of War to throw on this Y-Hander, there's two, there's two Ashes of War that I would recommend. If you're going for thrust counter hits like I do on a physical damage build, I would recommend the Giant Hunt Ash of War because this attack also gives you the opportunity to land thrust counter hits as well which will massively boost the damage that you're doing. If you're using this Y-Hander on a build that doesn't get pure physical damage, I would actually recommend something like Lion's Claw instead. Lion's Claw offers an extremely long range, fast attack with a very high motion value. This higher motion value will give you a significant advantage with split damage, which is going to multiply the damage numbers a lot further. If you're curious about what motion values are what, I'm going to leave a link in the description to all of the values that have been found in the game. Make sure to hit the like button and comment because YouTube really likes that stuff. And if you watch until the video is completely over, that also helps a lot with the algorithm. I upload every day, and if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Don't know what it is, but you will.